Join in the call to worship. The Lord has done great things for us. Therefore, we rejoice. We may sow in tears, but we will reap with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. Blessed be God's name. Let us join in our opening hymn, number 398. Oh. 
and mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. In me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with this, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth shall show forth your grace. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Please stand for the Gloria. Our scripture lesson this morning, this morning is taken from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 20 through 33. May we hear the inspired word of God. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it 
and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is not for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now the judgment of this world, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our affirmation this morning, number 888. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved.
You don't have to. I just want you to know you don't have to. I can do it without you. How's that sound? I can do it right here. It's that time in our service where we have our prayers for others. Um, I'm going to, uh, oh, before I forget, somebody I think is very special is going to have a birthday on the 23rd of this month. Yes, Miss Bonnie, happy birthday to you. <laughs> um, please keep in your prayers Wayne and Bernice Costin. Wayne is here with us, but Bernice and he both need prayers. Um, Neil Fifield, Jerry Creighton, uh, Jerry's doing better and back to work. Um, Karen Davis, Linda Wright, Brian Benoit, Tim Willard, Terry Rallier, Kathy Lee, Patty Walsh, Barb Beener, Grace Hutt, John Phillips, Lisa Briggs, Shirley Wolcott, Kevin Miller, Laura Eames, Darcy Cross, 
Bob and Terry Dick, Doug Bailey, Tracy Collins, Kay Canning, Kay Earl, Nancy Breen, the people of Palestine, Israel, and the Ukraine, the family of Wendy Stone, and the family of Earlene Russ. Do you have anyone else to add to that list? I have a thank you from uh, Virginia, my niece, Julie White, said to say thank you. So she stays in touch with a couple of the people here and the church center of a no, when her husband died, she wanted to know how much she really appreciated hearing from the church. She said to let you all know she would really appreciate it. Thank you. And little Gracie Hutt there, she is still undergoing chemotherapy. She just celebrated her second birthday and everything I asked Ralph, my nephew there, Hutt, he says it's still touch and go, but they, she is right now holding her own at the moment. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with all those that we have mentioned. We thank you for your love and your care. In your name we pray, amen. Let us now join together in our silent prayers this morning. Christ learned obedience from what he suffered, so too the tribulations and sorrows we encounter can teach us valuable lessons. We now offer our prayers to the God who brings salvation. We pray for those who are struggling with their faith today and having difficulty finding their path to God, that they will be able to see that he places his love within them and that they need only follow this love to experience the joy of his presence. We pray for all nations in turmoil and people hurting, that knowing that Christ has suffered as one like us, they may find consolation and hope in the power and presence of God. We pray for those who are homeless or poor or weak, and for those who are alone today, that people who have learned the power of compassion may walk with them and serve them. Compassionate God, Help us remember that you have placed your law of love within our hearts and that you have sent your son to be one like us. Help us become obedient and through the Lenten disciplines we embrace, may we become more aware of your presence and be attentive to the salvation you offer. Hear our prayers we ask through Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Are there any announcements that you would like to make this morning? Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Uh, one of the traditions we have in this church is a palm parade. And so I invite uh, all the children, grandparents, if you want to bring your kids, uh, the beginning of the service, we're going to have a palm parade around the uh, sanctuary and then uh, we're going to go out and we have some activities that will be going on during the service for our kids. So um, um, please bring your grandchildren, bring your children and uh, we'll have a good time next week. 
Um, also want to remind everybody the following week is Easter and we are having our coffee hour and Easter coffee hour. So if anybody would like to sign up to bring some goodies for the coffee hour, um, please sign up in the narthex. Thank you. At this time, we ask our ushers to come forward that we may receive our offering. washed clean and spirits made new, we celebrate the joy of salvation. May the offerings we share this day reflect the law of love that you have written on our hearts. May these gifts bear the fruit of your spirit, that they may bless those who need it most. Amen. Please be seated for our second hymn today, number 165.
save you. I think most of us here this morning would agree that we live in very stressful times, a messy world, because of wars, violence, terrorism, killings, which are rampant in our society. We often don't know what the future holds, so we hover on the edge of our fears, wondering whether to take one step backward into the darkness or one step forward into the light. We need to remember that Jesus was just as human and vulnerable as we are. He had human limitations, which is often difficult for us to understand. We recognize our own limitations because we often say, that we can do only so much. Jesus was as vulnerable to rejection as we are. He stated that a prophet is not accepted in his own country. We are afraid of our vulnerability because if we reveal our true selves to others, well, they might reject us. Vulnerability, however, does not mean that we are weak and submissive, but rather implies the courage to be our true selves reaching out to others, as when sitting at the bedside of a friend with an illness, calling someone on the phone who has just lost a loved one, or confronting a family member when needed. Jesus also learned obedience through suffering, which is a challenge for most of us. This statement again emphasized how human he was, as well as his willingness to obedient even as St. Paul says, to death upon a cross. So Jesus can identify with our sufferings or our temptations to let go when we lose control of the painful events that happen around us. In the gospel, Jesus announces that the hour has come for his glorification, but it is also an anguishing time which is brought out by the image of a grain of wheat, unless it falls into the ground and dies. It remains a grain of wheat, but if put into the ground where it gathers moisture and nutrients while dying, then a shoot sprouts up. If you ever watch this process, the seed looks pretty ugly, but once it springs up, we really do admire what it produces. A farmer who puts two bushels of seed in an acre may reap 40 to 50 bushels. One acre might be the size of a football field, and two bushels of wheat might take, make 2,500 loaves of bread, which could feed hundreds of people. Jesus died, and in a sense, fell into the earth, but this led to his resurrection and glorification. The shame of the cross became his glory. Ergen Moltmann wrote that Jesus was not crucified between two candles on an altar, but between two thieves. The historian Josephus wrote that Jesus died the most shameful way a person could die. In the movie Spartacus, 6,000 slaves were crucified on the road from Rome to Capua to warn others against insurrection. Jesus absorbed terrible pain in his passion, but he did not pass it on. He asks us to imitate him, especially in our suffering, and not pass on our pain by making somebody else miserable. Jesus wants to share the glory of the cross with us, but are we inclined many times to take a pass? It might be easier for us to venerate the cross as we do on Good Friday, rather than to carry it. In his book, Jesus, James Martin tells the story of Doris, who was confined to her wheelchair. She considered it her cross, but then it dawned on her how this was her resurrection because she was able to get around and do things rather than be bedridden. Jesus wants us to participate in this new life rather than clinging to our old habits of anger and resentment and harsh judgments. To eat bread, we have to thresh the kernel, and to drink wine, we have to crush the grape. In this celebration, we partake of the bread and wine, which are transformed, giving us the strength and courage 
to unite all our suffering to Christ, especially during this season of Lent, so we can look forward to the glory of your own resurrection. Amen. The closing hymn, number 465. God's law of love is engraved on your hearts. Trust God's internal compass to guide you. Discern the still small voice that whispers with every heartbeat. Go forth and heed the promise of the heart, the living law of love. Amen. <laughs>